Good evening and welcome to worship tonight. I am all by myself in this big sanctuary because St. Paul's Lutheran Church has decided to no longer have public worship, uh, at least for the next two weeks. Uh, we'll keep you posted, but that means we get to do worship together online, on li online, on live streaming. So I just wanna welcome you all and thank you so much for being open to this new way of worshiping. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please pray with me. Holy God, we are in the midst of the dark wood we are feeling uncertain, empty, and lost. God, thank you for the courage of others who are able to share with us their own fears and their own uncertainties in this time. And God, thank you for all of the gifts you give us in the midst of this darkness. Help us to learn, help us to comfort one another, and help us to continue to walk in your ways to the glory of your son's name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading for tonight is from Psalm 145, verses 13 through 20. The Lord is faithful in all God's words and gracious in all God's deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand satisfying the desires of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of all who fear him. He also hears their cries and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all the flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Music is a gift that God gives us in the midst of the dark wood. Music is a special language that God's given to us, that helps us to connect with God in a unique and special way. That's why music is such an important part of our worship experience. And that's why during this time where we can't meet together, where we can't have that community that we so yearn for, music is one way that we can come together Remembering singing these songs together as a community and knowing that we will once again sing these songs together. And so I want on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to share with you some music. And that way we can look at this music, be inspired by this music, and then listen to it throughout the week in worship and praise to God in the midst of the dark wood in the midst of these dark times. And very special to many of us. It was written by Charles Wesley. Charles Wesley wrote over 6,000 hymns, many of which are very close to our hearts and we still sing today. Charles Wesley was a leader in the Methodist denomination. His brother was John Wesley, who actually founded the Methodist denomination. And so these two brothers were, were 
important leaders within the life of Christianity. And one of the things that they give us, one of the gifts that they give us are hymns, especially Charles, who, like I said, wrote over 6,000 hymns, one of which he was inspired to write during an illness. Charles was sick and was lying in bed in pain, but this sickness, the doctor said, could possibly kill him. And so Charles laid in bed thinking about his uncertain future, fearing what might happen to him in the midst of all of his pain and suffering. And then his brother John came to visit him with some of John's followers. They read Charles' scripture and they sang hymns to him. And after John and his friends left, God put on Charles's heart, a phrase. And that phrase is Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease. This phrase helped Charles through his dark woods. The illness did not take his life. But this phrase gave him the strength and courage to be able to face the uncertainty and fear of his future. This hymn that he eventually wrote, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, was inspired by his walk through the dark wood. Jesus, who charms our fears. During this time of uncertainty and fear, it's easy instead of turning to Jesus who calms our fears, we turn to ourselves. We start going to the grocery store and buying up as much as humanly possible so that those of us who can buy in bulk do, but those of us who can't, who can't buy diapers in bulk, who can't buy toilet paper in bulk, are left without. We try and control our situation instead of turning to Jesus who will calm our fears, who will charm our fears. We turn to ourselves and we start sharing our fears with other people, trying to charm them, trying to calm them. But instead, we just ignite other people's fear. And then it goes and it goes and it goes. And the next thing we know, we're on social media and we're scared out of our minds because we're so uncertain about what's coming. Things change every day and we're so uncertain. So instead of turning to Jesus and telling each other about Jesus to charm our fears, to calm our fears, we stir them up. Or we look for someone to blame because it's easier to blame than it is to face the fear and uncertainty that we have in our future. Instead of turning to Jesus who calms our fears. Instead of turning to Jesus who bids our sorrows cease. I know friends, there is so much sorrow today there's sorrow over those who have died because of this disease. There's sorrow over those who have lost jobs, who have lost income, who have lost their ability to see loved ones, like those of us who can't go into assisted living homes to visit those we love. There's sorrow over that loss. And instead of turning to ourselves, trying to make those sorrows cease, where we might turn to bitterness or anger or frustration. Charles Wesley was inspired by God to teach us to turn to Jesus, who makes our sorrows cease. Because in Jesus Christ, we know that there will be an end to this dark wood. We'd like to think that it's going to be tomorrow, 
But even if it's not, we know that it's coming. And we know that even though we can't visit those we love, we know that God is with them and that God loves them. So it's in this faith that we have been cultivating, that we have been working with God to understand that helps us through this dark wood time. And so we turn back to Jesus who has already taught us and given us what we need to calm our fears and help our sorrow to cease. And that's why God has given us the gift of music and the gift of this hymn that so many of us love. So if I can figure out this live video thing, I would like to um, invite you to sing with me, O oh, For a Thousand Tongues to Sing. One more time. All right, I'm going to end it and then I will come back and we'll sing together. 